maior libertação na terra que eu lhe vou fazer é acabar com a ignorância na terra. Só uma hora que homens como Deus não terra, entende aquela vez? Que pode medo, que pode perder medo. In the history of African politics, many leaders have been assassinated while still in power, leaving behind a legacy. These leaders were often charismatic, visionary, and had a strong desire to transform their nations into prosperous and developed states. However, their ambitions were often cut short by political instability, corruption, and the ruthless actions of their enemies. This video will explore the lives and deaths of some of Africa's most prominent leaders who were assassinated while in power. Amilcar Cabral was a prominent African nationalist and leader of the independence movement in Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde. He was born on September 12, 1924, in Bafata, Portuguese Guinea, now Guinea-Bissau, and was assassinated on January 20, 1973. Cabral studied agronomy and economics in Lisbon, Portugal, and became involved in the African nationalist movement in the 1950s. He was a founding member of the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde in 1956 and became its Secretary General in 1963. Under Cabral's leadership, the PIGC launched a guerrilla war against Portuguese colonial rule in Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde in 1963. Cabral's strategy involved building a strong political and social base among the rural population and using guerrilla warfare to weaken the Portuguese military's hold on the region. He also established educational programs to teach literacy and agricultural skills to the rural population. Maior libertação que o povo não quer é libertar nosso povo de medo. Para libertar nosso povo de medo, tem que libertar de ignorância. Esse é fundamental, camarada. Cabral was known for his intellectual and philosophical approach to the struggle for independence. He emphasized the importance of culture and identity in the liberation of African nations and called for a united front against colonialism. In 1973, just months before Guinea-Bissau's independence, Cabral was assassinated by Portuguese agents in Conakry, Guinea. His death was a significant blow to the PIGC and the African nationalist movement, but his legacy as a revolutionary leader and intellectual continues to inspire people in Africa and around the world. Patrice Lumumba was a Congolese politician leader who played a key role in the movement for Congo's independence from Belgian colonial rule. He was born on July 2, 1925, in the Kasai province of the Belgian Congo, and was assassinated on January 17, 1961, in Katanga, a region in the southern part of the country. Lumumba was the first democratically elected Prime Minister of Congo in 1960, after Congo gained independence from Belgium. However, his time in power was short-lived and tumultuous. His government faced various challenges, including a secessionist movement in the mineral-rich province of Katanga and a rebellion led by Colonel Mobutu Sese Seko, who later became the country's dictator. Lumumba's government was also undermined by foreign interference, particularly from Belgium and the United States, who were worried about the potential spread of communism in Africa. Lumumba was viewed as a threat to Western interests and efforts were made to remove him from power. In September 1960, Lumumba was deposed in a coup orchestrated by Colonel Mobutu with the support of the CIA and Belgian authorities. Lumumba was subsequently imprisoned and subjected to various forms of abuse and humiliation. On January 17, 1961, he was assassinated, along with two of his top aides, by a firing squad led by Belgian officers and Congolese soldiers loyal to Mobutu. A new chapter begins in the dark and tragic history of the Congo with the return to Leopoldville of deposed Premier Lumumba, following his capture by crack commandos of strongman Colonel Mobutu. Taken to Mobutu's headquarters past a jeering, threatening crowd, Lumumba was impassive at this lowest ebb of his stormy career. Mobutu watched as his troops manhandled Lumumba, but promised the pro-red Lumumba a fair trial on charges of inciting the army to rebellion. Lumumba was removed to an army prison outside the capital as his supporters in Stanleyville seized control of Oriental province and threatened a return of disorder. Before that, Lumumba suffered more indignities, including being forced to eat a speech which he restated his claim to be the Congo's rightful premier. 
Even in bonds, Lumumba remains a dangerous prisoner, storm center of savage loyalties and equally savage opposition. Lumumba's assassination has been widely condemned as an act of Western-backed political violence and a tragic loss for the African continent. He is remembered as a hero of Congo's independence movement and an iconic figure in the struggle against colonialism and imperialism in Africa. Samora Machel was a Mozambican politician and revolutionary who played a leading role in the country's fight for independence from Portuguese colonial rule. He was the first president of independent Mozambique, serving from 1975 until his death in 1986. Machel was born in 1933 in what was then Portuguese East Africa, now Mozambique. He became involved in political activism at a young age and joined the Mozambique Liberation Front in the early 1960s. It was a Marxist-Leninist guerrilla movement that sought to overthrow Portuguese colonial rule in Mozambique. As a military commander and political leader of the Mozambique Liberation Front, Michel played a key role in the struggle for independence. After a long and bloody war, Mozambique finally gained its independence in 1975, and Michel was elected as the country's first president. As president, Michel implemented policies aimed at building a socialist state and promoting the interests of the country's rural poor. He also sought to forge strong ties with other African countries and was a vocal advocate for Pan-Africanism. Tragically, Machel's life was cut short when he died in a plane crash in 1986. The crash occurred in South Africa, which at the time was still under apartheid rule. Some have speculated that the crash may have been caused by foul play on the part of the South African government, although this has never been proven conclusively. Michel's death was a major loss for Mozambique and for the wider African liberation movement. Thomas Sankara was a Marxist revolutionary and Pan-Africanist who served as the president of Burkina Faso from 1983 until 1987. He was born on December 21, 1949, in Yako, French Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso, and died on October 15, 1987, at the age of 37. During his presidency, Sankara implemented radical policies aimed at transforming Burkina Faso into a self-reliant and socialist state. He renamed the country from the colonial name Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means land of the honest people. He also launched an ambitious program to improve healthcare, education, and agriculture, including campaigns to plant millions of trees to combat desertification. Sankara was a vocal advocate for African unity and independence, and he often criticized the role of Western powers in Africa. He supported the liberation struggles of other African countries and maintained close ties with other leftist leaders, including Fidel Castro of Cuba. I can't believe it. Oui, sortez là. Bon, voilà, vous, vous êtes là avec la publicité Levis. Faites la publicité de Levis. Bon, c'est bien. Je vois le jean, le jean avec ses, ses bien cousus là, Levis. C'est bien. Mais ça, c'est américain. Vous voyez même, c'est américain en bas. San Francisco. C'est écrit San Francisco. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez qu'on fasse Comment on va nationaliser Comment on va faire L'autre là-bas qui est venu poser la question là. Harvard. However, Sankara's revolutionary policies and outspoken criticism of Western imperialism made him many enemies, both at home and abroad. On October 15, 1987, he was assassinated in a coup led by his former friend and colleague, Blaise Compaor, who went on to rule Burkina Faso for 27 years. The circumstances surrounding Sankara's death remain controversial, and many of his supporters continue to call for justice and accountability for his murder. Sankara is remembered as a hero by many Africans for his commitment to social justice, pan-Africanism, and self-reliance. Muammar Gaddafi was a former Libyan politician and revolutionary who served as the leader of Libya from 1969 until 2011. He seized power in a military coup and ruled the country with an iron fist for over four decades. During his time in power, Gaddafi was known for his eccentric personality and controversial policies. He implemented a socialist economic system, nationalized the country's oil industry, and promoted pan-Africanism and Arab nationalism. 
However, his regime was also marked by widespread human rights abuses, political repression, and international isolation. He was accused of sponsoring terrorist organizations and carrying out terrorist attacks, such as the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland in 1988, which killed 270 people. In 2011, popular uprisings swept across the Arab world, including Libya, leading to protests and demonstrations against Gaddafi's rule. The protests quickly turned into a full-scale civil war, with rebels and opposition forces fighting against Gaddafi's loyalists. In October 2011, Gaddafi was captured by rebel forces in his hometown of Sirta, and he was killed shortly after under unclear circumstances. His death marked the end of his regime and the beginning of a new era for Libya, but also sparked controversy and criticism over the manner in which he was killed. The assassinations of African leaders while in power have left a tragic legacy on the continent. These events have resulted in political instability, violence and unrest, and have caused immense harm to the people and the countries they served. While some assassinations have been linked to political or ideological motives, others have been fueled by greed and a thirst for power. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.